So, some of the challenges of India's higher education governance are the affiliating structures, affiliating colleges to universities. We have a large number of affiliated colleges and there are issues relating to the autonomy of these affiliating colleges, more support needed for professional development of teachers. There is a lot of interference in leadership appointments, there is a need for a strong push for quality. We have severe faculty shortages and we need to recruit more quality faculty and we have and we need more industry academic collaboration and there is a lack of systemic human resource planning. So, these are some of the issues in terms of the challenges of India's higher education governance, affiliating structures are uh, a problem, we need more support for professional development, less interference, need to address the faculty shortages and more collaboration is needed. So, if you look at the Clark's triangle of coordination which looks at the state, the market and the higher education institutions, there is a strong push towards the market and the market is coming in a very big way both in terms of privatization, both in terms of private universities, in terms of self financing courses. So, this is the move from the state to the market and higher education institutions are more and more in being encouraged to be more entrepreneurial in nature. They are being encouraged to raise their own finances or like I will talk about later, borrow, uh, take loans from here, the higher education financing agency HIFA. So, that is a strong push towards uh, self financing and raising your own resources and that has important implications both in terms of teacher recruitment and in terms of teacher training. Some of the parameters of good governance are participation, transparency, responsiveness, consensus orientation, effectiveness and efficiency, autonomy, accountability and strategic vision. So, there is a need to have more autonomy in order to have better governance, there is a need to have more accountability and there is a need for more transparency and more responsiveness. So, these are some of the parameters of good governance. So, what is the role of teachers in this? We have a number of teachers in the senates, the syndicates and academic councils and the board of studies, but we need more. We need more participation of teachers in this in the uh, steering committees, in the uh, governing bodies so that their voice is adequately heard and it should not be a top down approach, it should be a bottom up approach. Now, I will talk about the research that we have done in the center on governance and management in higher education. We completed a large research project in four states that was uh, one of the universities was Savitri Bhai Pule Pune University and its affiliated college and University of Rajasthan, Bharatiyar University and the uh, Banaras Hindu University. So, one central and three state universities and some of the findings of that research were the perceptions of teachers on autonomy and we find that in terms of the uh, academic autonomy, financial autonomy and administrative autonomy which are the three aspects of autonomy, we find that teachers feel that they have academic autonomy, they can design their own courses, of course it has to be approved by the board of studies, but in terms of uh, financial and administrative autonomy there are a lot of uh, issues and this was across the board. But we did find that the central university that is the Banaras Hindu University, they feel that the uh, universities have less uh, more autonomy as compared to the state universities. So, the state universities have less autonomy as compared to the central university. Autonomy in teaching in terms of uh, having control over the time, having control over the learning process, we find that teachers feel that they, they do have control, but they do not have as much academic freedom as they would have liked. So, we need to have more academic freedom for teachers in order for them to be at the same level as in foreign universities, in order to prove, improve our rankings and in order for Indian universities to compete with their foreign counterparts. Autonomy in teaching, this is for the different uh, colleges. So, we had four affiliated colleges uh, uh, out of which one is an autonomous college that is the uh, government arts college of Coimbatore and three affiliated colleges. And we found that at the college level, a lot of focus is on teaching, not enough focus is on research and in terms of autonomy in teaching also 
there is a, a course load, there is a schedule in terms of the workload which is decided by the head of department and teachers have to adhere to that. So, even in these week you can see the figures in terms of how teachers feel about the autonomy that they have in teaching. Autonomy in research, in this the figures were fairly high where we found that uh, most of the teachers feel that especially at the university level that they have autonomy in research and they can uh, collaborate with who they want to, they can attend conferences, they can attend find people to collaborate with and they can work on the selected area of <coughs> research. When we look at the university college relations, we find that there is limited autonomy for colleges. Curriculum, syllabus, courses and examinations are all set by the university. Government arts college was the only autonomous uh, institution in the sample which enjoyed full autonomy in framing the syllabus, conducting examinations and publishing the results. College principals are on some of the university governing boards. There is involvement by the university in teacher recruitment in the case of aided colleges. So, you see that uh, there is limited autonomy for colleges and colleges need to be made more autonomous and we need to have more of uh, consolidation in terms of having less number of affiliated colleges uh, which are affiliated to the university. If you look at the workload, we find that in all the universities a large amount of time was spent in both teaching and in terms of attending meetings and administrative activities whereas, teachers should be spending more time on research. So, teaching and preparing for teaching and uh, in terms of the attending meetings, a lot of time was spent on that and less time on research and less time on other uh, activities in terms of community outreach and so on. In the workload across colleges, of course, the maximum focus is on teaching which needs to change. We need a research culture to permeate from universities down to the colleges and it is very important to have that, it is very important for colleges to also engage in research and not be just teaching uh, institutions. So, that is another very, very, uh, very, very important uh, factor. So, teachers feel at both the universities and at the college level that they are spending a lot of time in terms of the uh, administrative activities, in terms of proctoring exams, in terms of uh, examination duties and less time in terms of quality research and giving time for quality teaching. You can see in terms of the workload, people feel that the workload is mostly heavy and some feel it is too heavy. In uh, a few cases they feel it is just sufficient, but most of the times they feel that the workload is quite heavy. Of course, the workload is decided by the UGC and in terms of the guidelines they are laid out for assistant professors, associate professors and full professors, but in terms of the uh, work allocation it is the assistant professors have to bear a large amount of uh, time and uh, in terms of the high workload that they have and uh, that sometimes affects their research output. Number of committees served uh, at the university departmental level, university level, college level and external committees. We have number of committees uh, served for different uh, universities and we can see the variation across the different universities in terms of the mean. Publications and research output, there again we find that the central universities are, are ahead in terms of the papers for publication in peer reviewed journals and in terms of the number of uh, books and in terms of the number of uh, research output that they have. A uh, few exceptions in terms of uh, Bharatiya University where the number of books is higher, but otherwise in terms of the chapters in the books, in terms of the monographs, working papers, grant proposals, while there are exceptions in general central universities are doing better than the state universities. So, we need to take care of the state universities, a ma major amount of enrollment is in the state universities. So, we need to give them adequate funds, we need to give them more in in incentives for research and improve the research output in order for Indian universities to compete with foreign universities and improve their rankings.